G'day everyone, thank you very much for joining us. It's Rod Moore here. And uh, we're getting away in just one moment, just getting myself organised. So uh, while we wait uh, just to get everything set up here, um, perhaps just tell us where you're dialing in from, which part of the world you're from. For those of you who don't know, I'm from sunny Queensland, uh, the Sunshine Coast, although it's raining today, so that's a bit of a bummer, but hey, you get that. <laughs> so we're about to get underway in just one moment. Jacqueline, I'm not quite sure what you're laughing or crying about, but welcome. Thanks for joining us. So yes, we're about to start. Um, let us know where you are dialing in from. Moni is from KY. Welcome, Moni. KY, I assume that's Kentucky. Tracy, welcome from Nelson Bay. Glad you could join us. Looking forward to doing some painting for a Thursday morning. Thursday morning painting. It's going to be good. G'day Pauline, welcome from Newcastle, nice part of the world there, I've got family in Newcastle, haven't been there for years though. Alright, we'll get underway, get underway, I'm excited too money, I'm excited that you could join us, so thank you, <laughs> and um, I'm excited to see what we're going to do today, I'm not entirely sure, I've got a bit of an idea as to what we might do. Um, so it'll be good, it will be good. So just as we're waiting for people to join us um, and get underway, I just wanted to show you this one again, this is the painting we did last week in the live stream, um, a little acrylic landscape painting, and uh, I reckon it's come up pretty good. Um, it looks good in that frame, so I'll just show you some of the detail work um, in there. And we did this one pretty quickly, if, you've watched, if you were on the live stream last week or you watched the replay, um, you know, this took about 15 to 20 minutes to do because I used a big brush. You know, it's an 8 by 10 inch canvas and um, it went pretty well. And, you know, the key thing, there's not a lot of detail in here at all. It's just big shapes, really. Um, and the key thing that makes it work is the value structure is right. You know, we've got these warm temperatures in the foreground, stronger darks here. And then it grays off a little bit as we go back. And then as we go right back into the hills, it gets cooler as well. And um, we get the lighter tone of the highlights and the trees. And um, not much detail at all, but when you stand back and look at it, you know, it's come up pretty well. And so that's the sort of thing we're going to do every Thursday, or for some of you, I think it's Wednesday, depending on where you're dialing in from, is just do little practice exercises like that. Now I try and do three or four of these a day purely for practice and uh, try and do them in you know, under 30 minutes, um, sometimes maybe a little bit longer, but mostly uh, try and do them for under 30 minutes. So this frame goes really well with it. That sort of goldy silver tone just matches in beautifully with the um, tones that we put into the uh, middle distance there. And uh, this one's up for auction on eBay at the moment. I'm putting it up for 99 cent auction 
with the frame included. Normally, I don't include a frame for 99 set auctions. Um, so somebody's going to get that for a really good price. And the thing is, um, the thing is, when you actually get the painting and you can look at it directly, then you can compare the videos of what I'm teaching you to how the actual paintings come out. So if you're interested in that, it's going to be up on eBay, or it is up on eBay now, 99 cent auction. I'll put the link under the video um, when I finish up today. And I'll just show you a couple of others and then we'll get going. These are also up for auction at the moment. Um, that's, these are ones from the Learn to Paint TV show. So they're 12 by 16 inch um, paintings. That's the Capity Valley. That's the shearing shed one that we did this this week. Okay. And this is the Mary River one. And they're all up on eBay at the moment as well. Um, and they're from the Learn to Paint TV show. So if you're interested in seeing the actual paints, then um, I'd highly recommend that you, uh, you, you know, go and bid on those there. I'm putting them up at an affordable price, so you can, uh, you can grab one of those easily. Monia says she wants to learn more impressionistic style. Well, that's pretty much what we do here. We're not um, painting in the way that Monet and those impressionists did, more the Australian impressionists, but we, uh, we're certainly very impressionistic in our approach. So um, I, I'm not big on detail, I like more of an abstract sort of feel. So uh, even though I like to paint landscapes and seascapes and things, um, the lands, yeah, that, that more abstract approach is what I like. I like the viewer to be able to put the details in. Okay, let me just get a canvas. So for others who are joining us, let us know whereabouts you are. Let us know whereabouts you are in the world. And uh, thank you all very much for joining me. One of the things about being an artist, can get a bit lonely sometimes. And um, it's nice that you can all join us. So thank you very much. Okay, I know you're all waiting very patiently for me to stop talking and start painting. <laughs> so what I'm doing, I've got these little canvas panels, these ones here. I think I said last time I'd buy these on eBay, a little eight by tens. Huh? Um, they're just pre-made up canvases. And what I do is I put masking, well, what do you call that? Yeah, masking tape, I think it is. Stick it on there, and then I can just pop it up on the board there. Okay. Now you can see I've spilled a bit of paint on this from other paintings that I've been doing. But we don't let that bother us. <laughs> Probably just not quite straight on. No, it's straight enough. It's difficult to get all the angles completely right with this setup, unfortunately. But that will do. Okay. Hopefully you've all got yourselves a cup of tea. Very important part of painting. Okay, so what we're going to do today, what we're going to do today is a painting of a uh, sort of a rocky um, valley with a uh, distant hillside with rocky escarpments on it, and then you know the, the valley that drops down below, and then we're going to be standing on a, a, a rocky ledge here, looking across the valley, and we'll do some trees and things like that. It's a scene that I have done a few different paintings of, and you know I make it's basically a made-up scene, but it's based on um, you know travelling to places like the Grampians in Southern Victoria, and uh, also Capity Valley is a little bit like this, and it's a fun little painting exercise to do. I think I like rocky escarpments. There's um, a place up here, Kenilworth where there's a little bit of that going on. Cool. Let's get to use my fan brush. Um, I've got a really big announcement to uh, make as well. Something very exciting that I'm doing in May, which I'll tell you about at the end. Um, somebody remind me to tell you. <laughs> um, don't let me finish up today without me telling you about my really exciting announcement. Or at least I think it's exciting. Hopefully you will too. Um, okay. So I want to have a uh, rocky sort of mountain over that side there. 
Okay, so that's in the distance. And then I want to want to do a, a you know a rocky sort of cliff that we're standing on top of, looking across the valley. So I could put the rocky cliff there, you know, where we're standing there, but that kind of matches there. So I don't like that. So I'll put it here and I'll put this big rocky ledge there. That's all rock. Okay. And then we'll come down through there and we'll have... Now basically what I'm doing at the moment is both step one of the Moore method of painting and um, step two, a little bit, the blocking as well. Okay. So hopefully you've all been watching Learn to Paint TV. You've been learning the Moore method of painting. Um, maybe just leave a yes in the comments so I know that you have. Um, and you know, what do you think about the Learn to Paint TV? Is it good? Are you enjoying it? Okay, we'll go across there and then we'll run that down there. And that's going to need a little bit of foliage in there as well. And that means we can then put these nice highlighted rocks along the edge here. And what we're going to need, what we're going to need, this is all very horizontal. Okay, so we've got to think about the composition um, in order to, to make this painting work. We can't have everything horizontal. Um, do you ever use photos for reference? Absolutely, Monty, I, I use photos all the time. When I'm doing these little practice paintings, no. Um, these are just made up subjects. But those ones I showed you from the Learn to Paint TV before, uh, they are all from photos. Um, so if you check out our Learn to Paint TV, which we publish every week, I've always got a photo for those bigger paintings. Right? So what I'm doing today is really just practicing values, practicing shapes, practicing composition, and, um, and I'm not using a photo for that. I'm, I'm using my memory, you know, like of different places that I've been, but this is a made up scene that we're doing today. Um, because I think it's, you know, you don't necessarily need to work um, on a real subject for the sake of practice. Okay, so I'll pop a tree there. We might run that tree out of the painting. So we'll just pop it up there. I probably haven't left enough room in here to put my rocky escarpment. Can you see that? It's a bit of a bugger. So what will we do about that? We will just extend that over. Okay. I'm not going to let that become an issue. I like the tree shape. So therefore my rocky escarpment is going to go across there a bit more. Maybe drop it down a bit sharper angle like so. Okay. So everything's fixable. Oops, I don't like that line. Mm, we'll fix up the sky. Um, everything's fixable, especially with acrylic paint. Um, so it's all good. So nice darks in there. Have we got it dark enough in here? Probably not quite dark enough for what we want. Just in there. Okay. So I'll just darken those foreground rocks and things just there. And we we'll probably need a little bit darker in that foreground bush. Okay. So that's really step one and two. Of, well, not two. I haven't finished two yet. Step one, definitely. That's our drawing. A um, couple of big shapes. That's all we're doing is a couple of big shapes here. Right? The main feature is going to be the highlight on this rock here and the highlight on these rocks here. It's going to be the counterplay between those two is what we're really um, looking at as our main subject. So I've got a big shape here, a big shape with our um, distant mountain, a big shape with this foreground bush, and a big shape with this tree, which is going to be running out of the side of the painting. So it's one, two, three, four big shapes, plus the sky is five, but we didn't paint the sky, we just drew a line which made the sky. So we're looking at five big shapes, and if you approach painting in a simple way, um, especially when you're starting out, you know, like what are the half dozen big shapes? So when you stand there looking at, a, you know, you're out in the field, and you're looking at a landscape, and, and you're thinking, how am I going to paint all these details? Forget the details, what are the big shapes? And what's the relationship between them in their tonal values, right? So these three elements here are all going to be fairly similar in, um, in their strength tonally. They're going to be the darkest darks and, and strongest values. 
and then we're going to push that one right back. Okay. So if you can understand your big shapes and how they relate tonally, then uh, then you off to a good start. Okay. Let's get rid of that fan brush. Give that a bit of a swish around. So welcome to those people who are just joining us. Um, let us know where you're tuning in from. We always like to know. Okay. Now, what I'm thinking is that we put uh, a bit of sun glow there, either a sunset or a sunrise in here, and then we get blue in the sky up around here, just to make it a little bit interesting. Now, I'm using a 8x10 canvas, and I want you to take note of the size of the brush I'm going to use. Uh, it's a big one inch flat brush. Don't fuss around with little dinky brushes. It just won't help. <laughs> it won't help. Okay. Bit of yellow ochre. So, what we want, chunk of that white. Gonna get a little bit of the red. So see how much red I'm using? Little pinhead of the red. Pop that there. And then the same amount of the yellow. Because all I want is a little orangey glow. Uh, it's probably a little bit too much yellow. I'll pop that. That's why I popped to one side, just so I can test. So I get a bit more white. Um, I want an orangey glow to indicate a setting sun. However, I don't want it that strong. That's just way, way too strong. So I'll pop it down there. And I'll use whatever's on my brush to mix into it. Okay. That's a bit better. Okay, and I'm just going to lay that in to that lower part of the sky. Okay, and then I'll get some white and a little touch of the blue. Touch more of that blue. Start off up there in the corners. And then just work around the darks. Feel free to ask any questions as, as we go. Okay, now just cut in around these darks for the tree. Now ideally what I normally do is I normally um, allow my darks to dry before I come in and do this step. However, we're doing this live so We'll just work around. If it get a little bit of bleeding and so on, a bit of smudging of the paint, I don't care. Um, it, it all just adds to the overall effect. Now, while it's all still wet, just introduce that blue into that sun glow area, just lightly. And I need a little bit of that sun glow area up in, up into the blue as well. Because you know, when the sun sets, it lights up the sky quite a bit usually. I'm just going to work it around until I get a nice little pattern that I'm happy with. Often you need to let it dry off before you can see you know, exactly how it's going to look. G'day Pat, welcome. Welcome from Canada, glad you could join us. Hope all's well in Canada. Okay, so you can see we've got a nice light sky. Sky's the source of light. It's going to be the lightest thing in the painting. Next thing is going to be this uh, distant hillside. Now, there's quite a bit of it. It comes all the way down into here. Okay. We can't just block that in with one tone. We need to have a shift in the tone as we go. Okay, so we're going to start off with the blue. We're going to add a pinhead of red. Okay, Always just a little pinhead of the red when we're mixing it into other tones and I'm going to need a reasonable amount of white, not too much. That's probably around about it. Okay. I'm going to need some more white to, as we get lower down, I'm going to pop more white into it. So, okay. As we get lower down, I'm going to pop that white into it. So this is going to be darker than the sky. But it can't be too dark because um, let me just rise that up there. 
can't compete with our darkest darks. Okay? We need our darkest darks to be our darkest darks, if that makes sense. Um, so we want the mountain to be light enough so that it looks like it's in the distance, but not so dark, not too dark to be competing with our darkest darks. A little bits of red coming out in the brush there, which looks great. You, know, you probably can't see it on the video, unfortunately, but um, it, uh, it's really quite effective. Now I'm going to put in more white into that mix as we come down lower. Just want to lighten it off. <coughs> That'll just create like depth in the belly, um, just by lightening it off a little bit there. Edges aren't hard edges. Good, good. So I'll take this brush and I'll just pop that in some water. Uh, I won't clean that out. What I tend to do is use several brushes um, and uh, one for my cools and one for my warms usually. So I'll just pop that in some water and grab another brush. How's it looking so far? I'm just going to stand back and have a look. Not too bad, not too bad. Okay. So we're taking another big brush and we're going to now get into this um, where we're standing on this side of the cliff. So I'm going to take a big chunk of the Lisbon Crimson, pop that there, and a big chunk of the Yellow Ochre. I'm not going to put any white into that. I'm going to make it slightly more on the yellow side. Um, so this is the earth tone where we're standing here. A little bit of shadow there. Okay. Well, that was pretty quick to get that in. <laughs> so, pop that brush aside. What do we do next? It's all quite wet in here. Probably not the right time to tackle that just yet. We might come in here and have a play around with this little clump of foreground bushes here. So, so, let me think. So I'm probably going to use my uh, one of these brushes and I'm just going to get into those hairs on the end, like so. Just by pushing just that end up, if that's if that's my palette, let me just just by pushing the ends up through the paint and just getting those loose hairs, getting the paint on those loose hairs. And I'll start off. It will just work in some mid-tone foliage there. So for that, we're going to need a little bit more blue. Okay, a little bit of blue. Some of the yellow ochre. Okay, a bit more of the yellow ochre. I'm 
So I've just, you can see that, and that's sort of scrunched up the edge of that brush. And all I want to do is just very lightly, just start working up some foliage sort of shapes, but don't lose all that dark. Now I like this technique from Robert Hagen, um, he's a great Australian artist. Um, it just creates that creates that foliage effect. You can get those hairs to open up. Put a little bit of that orange in there just for well, not too much. Just to mix up that green. <coughs> Pardon me. And I'll put a little touch of um, a warmer yellow in there as well. Soon. Soon, soon. Okay. I'm just thinking about what I'm going to do next while everything is in different stages of drying. So what I'm going to do is come back to my dark. So as I said, normally I'd do step one and step two of the more method and then I'd let it dry and then I'd come back in with step three, which is where we're up to now really. Step three is um, you know, getting details in and finishing touches, highlights, that sort of thing. Um, so normally I'll be doing that over dry paint, which is the beauty of acrylics is it will dry fast. So today we're doing it over wet paint. I've just got to be a little mindful of how we approach that. But you know, if you're doing this at home, you only need to wait 15, 20 minutes and this will be fairly dry. However, if it is a little bit wet, you can get some nice soft effects in the sky and so on just by touching those colours together very lightly. And we'll overhang some of that there over the escarpment area. That distant mountain's looking a little bit too pale now. Can anyone see that? Just a touch pale and I'm, it could be bluer. It could be bluer. <coughs> Pardon me. Which we might do. Okay, I'm just, for the moment, I'll just strengthen that dark back up. Soften out some of those edges. Okay. And you're all very quiet today. Feel free to ask me any questions. I'm here to help and uh, happy to answer your questions. So unless you've all walked away from your computers, you've got the live stream going and you've all walked away. <laughs> That'd be fine. Okay, so I'm just taking my little rigger brush and uh, I'm just going to run around the tree and through there. I'll put some highlights on these trunk, some branches and things. A bit later on. get the base of the uh, trees in there now. Pop one that runs in behind there. Run a branch up. Like so. Switch to the palette knife now. G'day Cheryl from Maine in USA. Glad you could join us. Been getting all your uh, emails, thank you. Thanks Bruce, that's practice mate, that's practice. <laughs> well it's two things, it's knowing the basic fundamentals of what to do, the 
that's the first thing that's important, and then the other thing that's important is practice. But you know, even with that, you still make mistakes. I mean, I've got this rounded hump here. Not a very natural looking thing. Now, the good thing is I can correct that with the next step that we're going to do. But you know, it doesn't matter how many times you paint, you can still create issues. Now, I'm going to take some of this red. And the other thing, um, well, who was it? Bruce. The other thing is, mate, I'm using a limited palette. And that helps hugely. Okay, I'm just getting a pale tone here. And let me clean the palette and I'll show you what I'm doing with this palette knife. So that's the palette knife I'm using, right? One, one thing about the palette knife is always make sure you clean it with paper towel. You can see how I've got dry bits of paint on it. Not good because it makes it difficult to load it and to use it to best effect. Um, so make sure you always clean it. So have it you get into. Now what I want to do with the palette knife is I want to, let me just, still learning how to best approach to show you things. I only want that edge to have a bit of paint behind it, a bead of paint. So the way you do that is you just put, you don't place it flat into the paint, you place it on an edge and just cut it through. Can you see that? It gives you a bead of paint. Okay, so the colors I'm using, same colors I use every week in the Learn to Paint TV show and, and also nearly in every one of our online courses, including the free course, Ultramarine Blue, Lizard Crimson, Yellow Ochre, Titanium White, and I'll probably add a uh, Cadmium Yellow to it. Um, so basically those three colors are the ones I use in every episode of Learn to Paint TV pretty much and every online course because it just keeps it simple when you've got a limited palette. Okay. And what I want to do is I just want to place that edge there against the canvas and then just lightly drag it down to create um, a rocky escarpment type of an effect. Okay. So a little bit of the yellow ochre coming through there, which is good. Let's get a touch of that into there. That's probably a little bit too much of the highlights on, on the rocks in there, um, but that's okay because I can, I'm thinking I might repaint that hillside anyway. So it's, it's around about the same value. It's just slightly darker than the sky, but it's not, it's not dominant enough. Um, so I'm probably going to repaint that um, in a darker value. We will see in a moment. Okay, but for the moment, I'll get that rocky, little rocky outcrops that are poking through um, and catching that late afternoon sun is what we're looking for, right? So you want to do that nice and pale, and then we're going to come in here and we're going to do the same thing on these rocks here. In the foreground, we'll use that same tone we use for the earth tone, but we'll now lighten it back. Uh, it's getting close, a little touch more white. So because I'm using that limited palette, it, uh, it all connects. It all makes sense, you know, because all the colors are related to each other. Uh, yeah, I can do that, Pat. Um, first thing is to make sure it's clean. <laughs> so, paper towel, clean all the paint off. And when you load it, you only want 
one edge. Okay, so if you put the palette knife flat against the puddle of paint, you load the whole lot, which you don't want. So you just want to load that edge. So you put the edge against the paint and then just scrape it through so that you get a little bead of paint. And then you put that little bead of paint against the canvas and just very lightly drag. And because we've got wet paint underneath there, it pulls it off in a random fashion. If you've ever seen Bob Ross and Bill Alexander, the way they paint those um, Alpine mountains, they're doing exactly the same thing. You don't need their special palette knife. Um, I mean, I've got plenty of them here. Right. So they, they showed you to use these ones. Right. They're good. Um, and so the way you would load that is to just load it like that. Okay. And then I could use it for the same thing. I could come in here and add a little bit of sunlight onto our rocks. Okay. So basically their technique of hitting those alpine um, mountains is the same as what I'm, I'm showing you here. Um, it's a pretty standard sort of approach with the pellet knife. Okay. In there, what I think we need here. So I hope that that helped. G'day, Anne. Yes, it's uh, it's quite nice, which is why I like doing these little rocky escarpments. If you get them right with that broken up sunlight effect on the rocky face, there, it's uh, it is a beautiful effect. No doubt at all. And there's plenty of places in the world where you'll see that, you know. Places that it reminds me of are the Grampians in Victoria, Capity Valley, a few places up here in Queensland. Um, I don't know how I've ended up with a Bob, Bob Ross pellet knife in my hand, but that's what I'm using. So, <laughs> so you can see, if you mix the paint with that, you get it all over the place. So just a bit of paper towel, just pull it off. And then you can cut through and just load a bead of paint. So now I'm in the foreground. So because I tend to get um, a little bit abstract, or I like to, I um, I tend to go for thicker paint, less details in the foreground, and I'm starting to use the palette knife more. But see how that mixes in with that earth colour? Okay. Come back to my one inch brush. We'll get some more green happening. Just pop in a bush in there. And there might be a little touch of foliage out on the end of that rocky face there. There might not as well, <laughs> but there is now. Okay, so we'll get a little bit of that in there. And I think we're probably getting ready to now come in here and put our mid-tone green. Up in here. Now you've got to be careful when you're doing highlights. Um, if you ever look at how much paint I've got on there, if I was to just start tapping away to get my highlights in, uh, I could make a mess. It could end up horribly wrong because whatever's on the brush is what ends up on the canvas, <laughs> usually. So I'll just pull some of that paint out. And, and brush loading is you know, such an important part of this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to load this time. I'm just loading the edge there. So I'll do it slightly different from the way we did the grasses. And I'm just going to work that in here. This is very similar to what we've got down there. 
which will fix that by adding more highlight to this tree. But always remember to keep your darks. You've got the light coming from over here. So I'm putting my mid-tones facing towards the light. definitely too light for this distant mountain so we are going to correct that in a moment in a moment before we do that get my cab yellow light go Rosanna precious encouragement I'm not entirely sure what you mean but uh I'll take that as a good thing. <laughs> okay, yeah, just slightly too light there, but also I want to get some of this a bit more highlight. So I'll get cat yellow. So now I'm introducing a fourth color, but it's really as a, as a booster. And because all that paint's wet, it's going to be really. Very gentle with it. And the part of the reason why I'm doing this highlight here is just to separate, because I'm using a small canvas, I've probably tried to cram too much in there and I've got this bush and this tree competing too much. There's no breathing room there. So that's a compositional issue, isn't it? <coughs> and again, that's part of the reason why I like doing these little practice paintings pretty much every day, because you know when you sit back and analyze, <coughs> pardon me, Sit back and analyse the painting. Um, you pick up things like that, and probably you know the an analysing your own painting, and knowing what to look for, is probably one of the biggest ways of learning. I think um, a great artist once said to me that I said, "What's the best way to learn to paint?" And he said, "To let your paintings be your teacher." A little bit cryptic, but I think what he meant by that was um, learn from every painting that you do. And then take what you've learnt and move on to the next one. So, I think that's probably good philosophy. Probably applies to more than just painting. Probably applies to most things we try in life. Now, make sure you remind me at the end that I tell you my big announcement. I'm not going to announce it. Uh, to everyone else just yet, but because you've been kind enough to join me on the live stream, so I wasn't painting alone. I am going to share it with you. If you're interested, you may not be. Touch a highlight on those. Okay, I'm deliberately stalling because uh, <laughs> I'm debating in my head um, whether or not to darken that distant hill. At the moment, yes is winning. <laughs> um, so I'm kind of delaying because I want to see if it dries a little bit darker. You know, that's the beauty of acrylic paints. It'll it'll dry a bit darker, and I'm just kind of waiting to see. Um, it's looking a little bit washed out to me. That could be because of the lights in here, I and mean, when I take it out of the studio and put it somewhere else. Um, it could be fine. So I'm just going to pause for a moment, have a sip of my cuppa, 
And uh, you guys asked me a couple of questions. This is called professional delaying tactics. Ask me a couple of questions which we'll answer. And um, g'day Ray, thanks for joining us. Um, yeah, opportunity for you to ask me a couple of questions. We'll let this just dry back a little bit and then we'll decide what we're gonna do about that distant hill. While I drink my licorice tea. <laughs> and while you're thinking of a question, um, I do these little practice paintings and then I'll pop them up on eBay because I don't want to accumulate hundreds of hundreds of these paintings. So I do three or four of these a day. I did, I, yesterday I did about five or six. Today I'll do like one or two um, because today I'm planning on heading out and doing some plain air painting up in the hills. Although it is raining, so I'm touch and go with that. Uh, so yeah, I'll pop them up on eBay. I'll just put them up for 99 cent auctions and you know, um, over time people start to compete on on the better ones. And uh, it, with eBay, it probably takes three to six months to build up a following on eBay of people who want to buy your paintings and then get in competition. Um, so I don't invest a lot of time in the paintings because I start them at 99 cent auctions. Um, but you know, within two or three months, you can easily make 500 to a thousand dollars if you've got enough paintings going up there, obviously. Um, but 500 to a thousand dollars a month on eBay. Um, and the, you know, the good thing about that is that you then get paid to learn to paint because you're doing lots of practice paintings and you're getting money back for them so that you, uh, you can buy more art supplies. <laughs> That's my hidden ul ulterior motive is to be able to go and buy more art supplies. Um, Pat, did you put anything on the canvas prior to getting started? No. I'll show you what I did, Pat. It's a good question. See this box here? Buy it off eBay, right? Canvas panels. Because these are just practice paintings, right? I, uh, I don't do anything special to treat the canvases or anything like that. I buy the box of 60 at a time. They come two wrapped shrink wrap. They cost about 30 cents each, maybe. So all up, this painting is going to cost me, I don't know, 80 cents to do, right? Um, so I'm not doing any preparation for them at all. They're just little artist canvas panels and uh, 8x10s. They've got one, one or two coats of primer on them. I use thick, heavy paint when I paint. It's just the style that I use. And that's pretty much all you need. Um, good question, though. So I hope that helps. Okay. So for those of you who are interested in, um, in learning how to sell your, your paintings online and stuff, um, shoot me an email at rodmoreart at gmail, because on Monday I'm starting a new coaching group. I think I've got two places left, and uh, we're going to talk about, well, it's a 12-week program where I'll show you everything how to sell your art online, something I've been, uh, without really trying, because I've put all my effort into the teaching side of the More Art School and so on. Um, but I still sell a lot of paintings online. Uh, Cheryl, no, it's, it's not from a picture. It's made up from my memory of different places that I've been to. Um, so, you know, um, these Thursday sessions I'm going to do are more about just little practices like this. And, uh, and there won't be photos for these. However, I'll pop it up on eBay. Start the auction at 99 cents. If you bid on it and win, then you'll have something better than the photo. You'll have the painting to try from. So I, mean, I am going to, uh, I am going to, I have to come back and fix that. I am going to darken that. Made the executive decision. So it's blue. There's a little touch of red in there somewhere. And it's white. And it wants to be bluer. Okay. Getting closer, although it's still very close in value. You probably can't even see that, um, but I can tell it's slightly bluer. Okay, that's getting better. Let's have a look at that. That's better. It's getting closer. Okay, and this and painting is all about adjustment. You don't often get it right first go around. I don't want to lose all this little bit of uh, highlight on my rocks here, so I'll just work into them. Try and preserve the better bits of it. Same with my foliage and my trees here, right? 
So I'll just tap into it. But already I think that looks better. Do you guys agree? Leave a yes in the comments if you think that that's already working better. Well, I think it's working better. And because I've got the brush in my hand, that's what matters at this stage. So I hope you guys agree. Okay, now, I've got to track that mountain through the trees here. Got a couple little windows. Just making sure I'm not in the way of the camera. Color off the darks there. Don't panic if that happens. Okay, now good opportunity for me to tame this back. Um, I think uh, it's got a little bit out of control, so it's a little bit big competing with that tree. Let us just now say, Mr. Bush, you are too competitive with our tree. So I'll just start to work over the edges of that foliage and we'll open up this space between the tree and that foliage and we'll be a lot happier with life, okay? And we'll just reshape that foliage. We'll be able to go about our day happy knowing that our tree is working better. Or at least I'll be able to. <laughs> um, okay. You might not be as excited about that fact as I am. But hey. Now, this is the tricky part here, is getting along that edge, which is still going to be wet, without... Um, I think we can probably even bring that back even more. And it's a good way to get some nice soft edges in your foliage as well. Just tapping that sky colour into the edges without really pushing too hard um, will give you nice soft edges. And then I'll tidy it up. This, you know, the foliage has to sit in front of the sky, so I'll have to come back to that. Drag a little bit of sky into those. Grass is there. Okay, I'm just going to stand back and have a look. It's definitely working better now. Yeah. It's not there yet, but it's working better. How are we going for time? Whew, I've got five minutes to finish. Okay. Get in here. I've just gone a little bit lighter. So if we get light, lower down. Better. Ta -da. Much better. Yes, Malvia, that's exactly what we we're trying to do. It was, I, I felt it was a little bit too light and uh, 
too far off in the distance so I wanted to bring it forward and separate it from the sky a little bit but still have the stronger foreground tree um, being more dominant so definitely brought it forward you're absolutely 100% correct which is what we were uh, we were aiming at just gonna have to come up with a better solution for taping my board down I'll work on that for next time dry brush okay so last chance to ask me questions guys because uh, I've got about five minutes here We're just getting a little bit more detail work with our twigs and things. So it's such a good idea to open up that sky area because I think it works better with the little tree trunks and things all shooting off there. And uh, that was a smart move. So well done everyone who encouraged me to, to do that. branch out there and back across that way mm, don't like that <laughs> that was a mistake that was a mistake what do you think you're doing what am I doing got a little bit too carried away with myself which I often do um, that okay, so we'll just leave that one it's getting a little bit too wet in there now for me to make meaningful changes I think So it's getting a little bit muddy, so I'll have to leave that and then just fix that at the end. Okay, touch more foliage, tone. Just bring some of that up in there. <laughs> Thank you, Peg. I am very positive. I wasn't criticising myself because uh, I think making uh, adjustments is a key part of painting and knowing how and when to make the adjustments is absolutely a vital part of becoming a good artist. So I wasn't being negative with myself, even though I was calling it a mistake, but I appreciate your thought and I think you're 100% spot on. You do need to uh, believe in what you're doing and be positive along the way, absolutely. <coughs> Couple of little details like that. Um, maybe put in some broken twigs and things just to break up that white or that light tone there. And that's about where I think we're going to leave it before it pops off onto the floor. I need to get a better solution for fixing that. But um, hey, I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, I've certainly enjoyed your company. Um, painting can be a, you know, a lonely profession sometimes. So I really appreciate you guys joining me. Hopefully you've learned something from it. Um, if you haven't already done so, go and check out our free uh, painting course. Just go to the learn to paint dot academy. So it's www.learntopaint.academy. And um, 
you can take one of our free courses there. And uh, we're going to do this every week, so hopefully you can join us again. Thank you, Cheryl. You always hesitate. Well, you know, what's the worst thing that can happen is you make a big muddy mess. And with acrylics, if that happens, um, then go and have a cup of tea, maybe lunch, and uh, come back in half an hour to an hour. It'll be completely dry, and then you can just paint all over it. <laughs> and that's why I like doing these little practice paintings, because I don't have anything invested in it emotionally. Um, well, I shouldn't say that. I mean, every painting's an expression of your emotions. You know, this is, I'm painting this because I love this type of Australian sort of country scene, right? So there's an emotional investment there. But what I mean is, if I muck this painting up, it doesn't matter because I'm gonna do three or four practice paintings like this a day or whatever period of time works for you. Um, so therefore, go and have a cup of tea, go out shopping, then come back, paint over any mistakes that you feel you've made um, and don't, don't get caught up about, you know, about that. Um, hey, thanks Kay, I appreciate you joining us. I'm not really sure what you're saying there, Melvia, but I'm sure you do. Thanks, Peg. Thanks very much for joining us. Marcia, thank you very much. Thanks for joining us, Pauline. Thanks, Cheryl. Going to start doing these at this time every week. And uh, I'm going to also do a uh, oil painting um, live stream once a week as well. So look out for that. Um, probably with the oil painting, I'll be working on my plain air paintings. So the ones I do in plain air, I'll be bringing into um, the studio and then making any adjustments and corrections that I need on the oil paintings. So I'll be promoting that on more art school. Um, I'll show you what I mean, just so that you understand what I'm gonna do with the oil painting. So I'm doing a lot more plain air painting now that my back is fixed. This is what I did the other day, okay? It's a larger plain air painting. And, uh, you know, that's probably, I probably got to about 70 to 80% out in the field. I was looking into blinding sunlight, so it was starting to get pretty hard. It needs a bit of work. So in our oil painting live streams, what I'm going to be doing is working on my plain air paintings and, and doing the, you know, sort of finishing uh, touches and, and bringing it up to a level where it can be framed and put into an exhibition or a show. Um, so I'll be promoting the oil painting class or live stream soon. Look out for that. And um, one other thing I'm gonna do. Okay, so the other final thing is, um, every Friday, my Friday, at the same time we put this one on, um, I'm going to do a, um, come on brain, what am I gonna do? Oh, I'm gonna do an Artpreneur um, 30 to 40 minute uh, chat on our Facebook page live stream, talking about those of you who are interested in art, the art teaching business, like I do, um, or selling your paintings online or whatever, anything to do with the business side of becoming a, an artist who earns an income from their art, that'll be on, um, Fridays, same time as this one. So I'm going to be talking to you a lot. Hope you can join us. This will be up on eBay over the next day or so. Um, not a bad little painting, actually. When that dries off, that's going to come up okay. Uh, you know, I particularly like this little rocky outcrop here where you can go and stand and look across the, the valley there. And um, these warmer tones in the foreground really interplay with that cooler, distant hillside. So looks like you're looking across the valley there. Thank you all very much for joining me. Hope you've all enjoyed it. And um, thanks Tracy. Appreciate that. Cheryl, glad you can join us next week. Thanks Monty. Thank you everyone. Talk to you all soon. Cheers.